Bear, career high 10 tackles for you, two fumble recoveries. Uh, it was a defense that dealt with a lot of injuries this weekend and kind of a bend or break, but you guys came up big when you needed to. Absolutely. What, uh, what was driving you guys throughout the game, you know, when it was just back and forth? Mm -hmm. Well, coming into this game, we already knew just like we already know, we all knew that the ACC, like all the talk and stuff, like we knew we kind of had an underdog feeling. So we just knew from the beginning of the week, we just wanted to work our, <laughs> wanted to work our, work our hardest so we can come out and put our best performance out on the field. And that's, I feel like that's what we did. I mean, we gave a bunch of big plays, a bunch of big plays. The offense made big plays, had our backs, and we made some big plays. And we just had both each other's back. It's a lot big team win. And there's some some games are gonna go like that. It was like our, our coach continued to tell us that it was a dog fight, so dogs fight, you know I mean? Pickett was gonna do what he was gonna do, but you guys kinda of found a way to contain him, especially in the second half. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the emphasis that was put on you guys during halftime? Um, it was really when we when we were going to blitz the edges, we continued to run around him, so we had to keep him in the pocket so he wouldn't get out and be able to scramble and throw like he does best. And I feel like we narrowed it down a little bit in the half. I mean, he still kept doing his thing, but I mean, we, we got the job done. What about, you know, I mean, rough opener in Michigan, you know, they come out and score real quick. You know, it's like 7 nothing and like, I mean, but you guys kind of responded immediately. I mean, right. sort of, what was the vibe? What was it a, like, what was the vibe early in the game on the sideline? Mm -hmm. So, honestly, right after that Michigan game, we all knew, like, it was just the vibe that coming off that field, like, we never wanted to feel that way ever again. Like, we knew that the performance we put on was not us. So ever since then, everybody on the defense just narrowed it down, started buying, and, all, and the saying we use is all in. So everybody was all in this week, dialed in, and got that team win. What, what, what do you say about you just watching, you know, Caleb and your guys on offense kind of, I mean, they held the ball for 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, so you weren't even on the field that much, I guess. Which nah. Is, which is nice. I mean, just watching those guys work, what was that? Right. It was amazing. I mean, I know that they're, they pride themselves on holding the ball and being efficient with the ball and not really turning them much over. And when they do, coaches hard on them, hard on them. And ball security is everything with that. So being, being one and being able to stay on top of each other and not be tired as one, just keep pushing, keep pushing the ball. It takes a lot. So I give a lot of props to offense and all they did today. First win over a Power 5 team, I think, in five years for you guys. I mean, what is, I know you still got conference play coming up after yeah. next week, but um, you know, what does this say about where you guys are at? You think? Mm -hmm. um, it says a lot, but uh, our goal is number four, so we're going to go get that. Sky, uh, obviously, you know, it's a huge win, and then for you personally, a huge win in front of a lot of friends and family. Uh, just talk about the feeling in the locker room. It was just a great feeling. Like, I, I came into the game trying to, like, treat it like a regular game, you know what I'm saying? But once you see, like, your best friends, your mom, your cousins, your brothers, it's not a regular game. So I feel like I feel like we came out through the first punch and was able to keep on them the whole game. So Coach, earlier in the week, said you were healthy enough to play last week, and you yeah. didn't, and you looked a little mad on the sideline. Both yeah. Days. What was the mindset for you coming into the, this week, knowing you were coming out of injury? Just, I was just, just trying to get ready for this game. Yeah, I was a little... A little frustrated. I probably never sat that long in my life. So <laughs> it was like it was it was a little hard, but I, we got through it and we came out and got the dub. In the second half, you guys really kind of controlled the clock. Um, but I gotta ask, what was uh, what was your thoughts when you get out there and, and number six makes his collegiate debut to start the second half? <laughs> oh yeah, I I honestly didn't even know. I didn't know, but he put the ball right right where it needed to be. I got a completion from him, so it was it was like clockwork, just like practice. Since that Michigan game. You know, you guys really kind of dominated possession last week and now this week. Um, you know, was that the plan going on, knowing that they could have a quick strike offense to slow them down? Um, yeah, we, kn we knew what they were capable of, and we just wanted to go in and exec execute our game plan that we had set. Sorry, forgive me, um, did they recruit you? Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. And what was the, what was the decision to, to not come here into the summer game? Um, I just I didn't end up getting the offer. It can't, it was I got recruited hard, but I just didn't get the offer. And uh, I'm here at Western now. You know, you you grew, you grew up here watching them, and they, like this is what happened today has happened to them before, where they have pretty good teams and they lose to teams that are from non-power five conferences. Yeah. Were you? I mean, were you, did you want to prove a point today out there? I mean, you talked about seeing your friends up here and your family here. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you would have envisioned a day where you would have been on this sideline instead of the other. I wouldn't say prove a point. It was just like I was coming out here with a great team, and we came here and showed that we, we play football too at a serious level. So it, that's what happened. Why are you guys so successful? I mean, being able to just kind of, I mean, that RPO just seemed to have them off balance like all day. That's who we are.
that's 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 what we do. That's our bread and butter. So we were we we were just able to go out and execute. That's the you feel me bottom line. You know, every time you guys would kind of score, they they kept responding. They kept mm -hmm. responding, but then and you had to go out there and you basically had to score. What was sort of the mindset and the and, you know each time you got on the field and you go up seven and it's tied. You go up seven and it's tied. And what's the mindset going back out? Going into every drive is the score. So, I mean, they were having. They're going to. It's a game of runs. They're going to have their their good uh, good plays too. So, when we get on the field, we're trying to score too, just like them. What kind of message is sent about where you guys are at? I know you got one more non-conference game, but you know I know there's big expectations for what happens in Burton in October. For sure, it's. Um, I could say you could. The, like the world could take this as like a. We we're getting better every week. You know what I'm saying? So, we're we still have yet to hit our best football. And we're a team that's going to continue to progress throughout the whole season. 40 minutes of time of possession. That kind of tells the tale a little bit of the game. And let's just get, get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just told the guys, I thought it was uh, about as good of a team win as I've ever seen. Um, you know, nobody, I don't think anyone dominated. I think I, I think off, offense did some things good and some things we need to work on. Defense, same way. but. But we, we were efficient in what we did well, you know, and uh, we kept fighting. It was hot. Uh, Bryson Garner goes down. I mean, we're, we're down five, six defensive starters. They're an explosive offense. Um, and we just kept fighting, you know, and uh, defense came up with big turnovers. And, uh, and we, we feel confident in what we do. We do what we do, and, and we, worry, we're, we talk about details. We have to play with details. Everything we do has to be with details. And I thought we did. You see in the RPO scheme, and. Uh, what we did, we mixed it up, uh, kept them off balance, but still have to throw and catch it. And the, the, the route's got to be exact, the mesh has to be exact, and the throw has to be exact. And uh, watching those guys out there, you know, I wish we could have got Caleb and Ivy faster, but Salapak went in there and went three for three, and he did the same thing. Uh, he needs to work on his mesh a little bit, uh, but, but he was just efficient at running our system. And um, getting the ball at the end with four minutes left and running it out is, no better feeling, you know. Offensive line struggle with those guys a little bit early, uh, and then warm down, which is hard to do. So give them a lot of credit because they were they were hitting Caleb a lot early, and our guys just kept fighting and making plays. And Sky cramped, and and Caleb cramped, and it was it was. You know, we just kept going, no matter who was next man up. And I know everyone says that, but it had to be today. Uh, but I couldn't be more proud of that. Special teams was missed the field goal early on, but made one to give us the lead at an important part of the game. Uh, we had to have the hands team out there. We had to execute a lot of different things. They went 11 up on punt at the end of the half. And um, I thought they did a good job of executing in unique situations. We had uh, Zaire up here earlier. Oh, um, he was great. You just talked about the progress of, of his career. I mean, 10 tackles today, right man at the right time for those two fumble recoveries as well. Yeah, I, I think with Zaire, I mean, one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet, uh, was uh, one of our best players on our team. And then last year in training camp, blew his knee up and hasn't really done anything until this July. And, and just he's trusting it again, you know what I mean? And trusting it and trusting it and trusting it. And he's he obviously he looked like himself today. He hasn't really looked like himself. He's, he's you know, when you, anyone who's come back from an injury, they know that uh, you come back, you're healthy, you're strong, but you got to get out of your head. And uh, he's been working so hard. Obviously, AJ getting hurt, uh, Ryan Selig being hurt. Uh, really put a lot of pressure on him and Corbin to play great and uh, and pick up the slack and Stucky came in and, and uh, Harrison Taylor came in and played well but three was always around the ball you know he's played a lot of football and uh, man it was fun to to watch him make big plays when we needed it. Coach, uh, what kind of mess? I mean, two weeks ago you open you have a rough day against a big time school and you come out two weeks later and 516 yards of offense, 44 points against a team that just beat Tennessee last week. I mean, how did how did you? You know, I think uh, it was really difficult. I, I don't want to make excuses, but um, I thought I thought we did a good job on defense against Michigan. We didn't tackle well. We didn't get pushed around for the first time ever. Um, this offense is really hard to run when you have no clue what the defense is going to do. And they have a brand-new defensive coordinator. We never got into rhythm, nor did we know which one of the Ravens' 250-page playbook he was going to bring with him. And we never – really got it going against them because we didn't know if they were going to be five down, four down, three linebackers, two linebackers, where's 97 going to be? And, and uh, I really, that hurt us. You know, with, we tried to just drop back pass and regular throw. Uh, I'm sorry, drop back pass and regular runs. And because uh, I wasn't going to put our players in a situation where we're going to run an RPO and we don't know who, who the run fit is. You have to know who the run fit is. 
And once you do, you're dangerous, you know? So, uh, so that was tough. And, and I know our guys are frustrated. We tried to figure out what they were doing. We, they were a step ahead of us. Um, I enjoyed watching it after the game and kind of seeing what they're going to do. The guy did a great job. They're, gonna be, they're really good on defense. Uh, we play them totally differently again if we were to play them, just to give ourselves a chance, you know? But, uh, but they just, they believe in our system. You know, last week, uh, the defensive coordinator did a really unique job of just making us hand everything. He was not going to let us. One time he got out of position and we threw a touchdown pass on an RPO. We called 50 RPOs and handed it 49 times and, and held the ball for 38 minutes and ran it. Uh, today we knew this defense. Uh, I have more respect for Coach Narduzzi than probably any coach as far as what he's done over his years of playing defense at a really high level. And we knew who the run fitters were. They switched it up on us, and we were able to keep up with them. And, um, and so I think they just believe in what we're doing and, and what we're seeing and, and trusting each other. And, and it showed out there, you know, because we didn't, we didn't score every drive, but we were efficient enough to get a couple first downs and, and just move the ball and hold the clock a little bit. I didn't know it was this much. I had no clue it was 40 minutes. That's more than I thought. But, you know, knowing Pat the way you do, you know he's going to play press man on the outside. So if you tell your receivers, hey, you're going to be one-on-one, -on -one, just go All that thing. Oh, man. I, I mean... They knew exactly what they were going to get. I mean, I, I, I played him when I was the offensive coordinator at Syracuse. I played him here, oh, actually in the Dome. And I've watched that game 300 times this week and, and where they're going to come and how they're going to fit and what our matchups are going to be and what variety of, of matchups we're going to need to keep the safety off balance. And uh, we were able to do that. And he did some new things. One new thing I've never seen him do, he pressed, pressed him. We, we had a couple uh, things we tried into that we never really – uh, hurt that 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 look, but uh, we caught him one time, you know, keeping the Sam out of the fit, bringing the boundary safety down. We you know we changed our RPO and hit five for a touchdown on that one. And the guys up up in the booth did a great job of. They just don't show anything. I mean, it has to be a post snap read. You have to have a quarterback that can post snap everything. I played against it when I was a player at Northern Illinois. That's where they were at and got hit a lot. I hated it <laughs> playing the quarterback again. I would, there were in RPOs back then. You had to drop back into that and not know what coverage they're in until your third step and you're about to get crushed. I mean, every time we drop back, Caleb pretty much got sacked. It looked like me in 1997. Uh, so the, the invention of the RPO was a great thing, you know, and so it, uh, and we want to be a running team. So it, it kind of keeps us, our, we like to throw it, but it, it keeps our mentality. We're coming downhill at you. And, and uh, it was, I was proud of the way the guys fought through everything. And, and so it was, it was a big win for everybody. So that was, that was just cramps for Caleb then? That's it. IV at halftime is like, come on. I was like, I didn't, I mean, we were wondering, like, he went out there. Yeah, he was still in here getting an IV. And we we're, I mean, did you expect to go three and out or get him to go three and out? No, I just I was expecting to come out any minute. And I was like, come on. And I, I was getting upset. I don't get upset much, but I was like, come on. I mean, everyone in the country gives IVs at halftime. Like, we need to get our guys back, you know. And he came running out, you know. We put him in on fourth down. Um, so, uh, yeah, we just had to get him hydrated. And he was cramping the whole time. And uh, did a great job. Not, not really from getting hit, like bumps and bruises. Just, I mean, we had a couple of guys that were getting the IVs, and uh, definitely was hotter than I thought. You know, 84 felt felt like 90, 98 for some reason. I mean, on the on the field, it really it was supposed to be 81, and then this morning it still looked like 84. We've been hydrating since Wednesday anyway, but still, we had people dropping like flies. I'm sure they did too. Cramps and. Um, I mean, Caleb couldn't even celebrate. He kept cramping, cramping. Mm -hmm. He's trying to, he came over to hug me and it almost fell in front of me because he had a, a leg cramp. So it's part of the deal. And, uh, you know, we got to get hydrated, get healthy, and get back to work. Uh, just one last one. The ability to respond every time. I mean, because, like, you know, you're just back and forth. But it's most of, again, you guys are, for the most part, are up seven and they come back. Up seven and they come back. I mean, the ability to mentally just sort of hang in there as an offense. Well, and knowing you have to respond every time. I mean, yeah, well, that's. That is our number one cry as a program, respond. That's a, we have a montage four, and that's what the R stands for, respond. Not react. There's a big difference between reacting and responding. Reactions are, are emotional. They're not thought out. You react, someone punches, you react, you punch them back. Uh, responding is the first responder. You, you've calculated and, okay, we have to score, but we know it's not going to be easy. We know we're going to have to throw the ball on, on a four-minute drill, which we did. And um, So we talk about it all the time. It's, it's way easier to talk about it than than to do it in that scenario, uh, but they did. I mean, watching Jack Salapak go in there and respond to, hey, you're in. And he went in there and was three for three and read, the, read things well. And so uh, proud of the guys. And we're going to be in a lot of close games. It's part of the deal. And, uh, and this will be a big one. And hopefully we can continue to respond. Uh, 
because uh, it, it does matter in, in, in big games. It's always going to happen that way. Coach Scott, you mentioned uh, you know, getting better one day at a time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Anybody other than Corey Crooms represent that to a T? I mean, his numbers have gone up every week. Oh, I mean, we knew. We knew going in. Uh, I told him on Tuesday uh, we, in one-on-ones. It was him and the safety going one-on-one, our normal one-on-one -on -one drill. And I said, hey, Corey, this is the game. And he's like, what do you mean, Coach? I'm like, this. The safety's at 10, you're here, and no one else is around. This is it. If you want to win this game, this is how it's going to happen. And and man, he, he responded. We I think we were trying to get the first three balls of the game to him. Boom, 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 and just get him going. And we had a, a different personnel grouping so we could put Sky there too, because then that, that was going to be our best matchup. Sky had some things into the boundary that were good for him too, but we wanted to make sure we could get him in that spot. And uh, he just keeps growing. You know, he came in early and had a terrible first spring, and then was a two last year, and he's just gotten bigger, faster, stronger. And they they, they try all the guys trust each other, and K K's the leader, obviously, but. Uh, but yeah, it's just been fun. Even uh, Jacob Gideon, our, I mean, he had a couple of penalties today. Uh, first time starter in there, guard. He got tossed around a couple. And that number eight in there is a is a special human being. They're 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 a three technique shade guy, and he he got and he got by him a couple of times. But he just kept fighting, and kept fighting, and and they kept you know leaning on each other. We had a lot of TV timeouts. We had a lot of time to talk. <laughs> you know, just saying, just saying, hey, we got this. You know. Uh, and, and they were challenging each other, but also being positive, you know. So uh, watching the first-time starters, which those are really our two first-time starters, you know, uh, that didn't start before. And uh, and they're getting better and getting comfortable. And, and I thought the guys around them, you know, played better. And so we're, we're getting better. We, we had a, a better week of practice, not a great week of practice. Thursday was not a good day. Uh, and we're going to get back to work and, and, and put a full week together one of these weeks and, and, uh, and keep getting better.